Quinlan was born in ancient Rome. Quinlan possesses only half of human bloodline because his mother was infected by the master while she was pregnant. He doesn't have nematodes in his body, so he can freely move in sunlight. Due to his extremely peculiar appearance, he has been constantly hunted by humans. As a last resort, he came to the arena, where none of his opponents survived for more than three minutes in front of him. It's not I who wants this outcome. Your own kind demands it. Humans love watching him fight. With the protection of the nobles, Quinlan managed to establish himself in the human world. After Vasily and Dutch became intimate, Dutch went home to get some things. Concerned for her safety, Vasily accompanied her. Strangely, Dutch couldn't open the door with her key, as if it was locked from the inside. Vasily forcefully broke in and behind the curtain, they discovered a woman. Dutch immediately recognized her as Nikki, the one who had left Dutch behind at the gas station. Seeing Nikki in such a pitiful state, Dutch chose to forgive her, and they returned to the base together. At this time, Citrakian asked Vasily to go to the factory with him. When they arrived, Vasily cut the fence, and just as they reached the entrance, they saw a school bus. Citrakian instantly understood where the feelers were coming from. The factory security noticed them, but before he could call for backup, Quinlan appeared and killed him. Inside the factory, they discovered a massive pit, which must be the breeding ground for feelers. They found several dead feelers on the ground, indicating that they didn't meet the standards of the Strigoi. Suddenly, they heard a roar from all around and found themselves surrounded by a horde of feelers. However, the feelers were too fast, and their attacks couldn't reach them. Just then, the feelers seemed to sense something terrifying and began to retreat. Citrakian realized that Quinlan had followed them and proceeded to eliminate all the feelers. Citrakian looked at the man who resembled the master and was at a loss. Quinlan expressed his respect for Citrakian, as he was the only one in the past hundred years who managed to severely injure the master and find his lair. Learning that the master was here, Citrakian quickly asked Vasily to blow up the building while he followed Quinlan upstairs. While passing through a room, Citrakian discovered the decaying body of the master's former vessel. By then, Vasily had finished installing the bomb. Quinlan found the master on the rooftop. And the master mocked Quinlan's lineage. Enraged, Quinlan charged towards the master. Suddenly, the building started shaking violently as the bomb installed by Vasily exploded. Massive rocks fell in front of the master, blocking Quinlan, who was unable to capture the master. Quinlan was very angry about this. It will definitely be more difficult to catch the blood ancestor in the future. As all of this was caused by Citrakian, Quinlan told him to stay out of it and let him handle the rest. Eichhorst is applying makeup to Kelly, who has just been transformed into a vampire. This way, she could blend into the human world without drawing attention. With his makeover, Kelly started to resemble a human. Eichhorst then gave Kelly the master's task of bringing Zack back as soon as possible. Kelly quickly arrived at Red Hook. It is heavily guarded, making it difficult for Strigoi to infiltrate because they need to be exposed to ultraviolet light. Just as Kelly was about to be exposed, a Strigoi suddenly emerged from a vehicle behind her. Taking advantage of the distraction, Kelly quickly entered Red Hook. She parked the car in the underground garage and released the feelers. On the other side, Injured F returned to the base and Nora quickly bandaged his wounds. F told her that Palmer had sent someone to kill his best friend, and he was determined to seek revenge. So, he found Vasily and asked where he could buy a sniper rifle because he wanted to kill Palmer. Soon, F arrived at a shipyard following the address. When he entered the house, a woman with a gun intercepted him. After learning F's identity as a doctor, the woman took him to her injured father. F immediately approached to examine his injuries and discovered that his abdomen had been pierced by a bullet. Since all the nearby hospitals were closed, F prepared to perform the surgery himself. Two hours later, F completed the surgery. To thank F for saving him, Jimmy Woo agreed to his request and gave him a sniper rifle. On the other side, based on the clues given by Quinlan, 
Satrakian arrived at a church where the Oxido Lumen was said to be in the possession of the bishop. They successfully met the bishop, who thought they didn't look like wealthy people. Well, the price is now $750,000 in gold. However, Satrakian knew the importance of the Oxido Lumen and agreed to his conditions, promising to pay the money within 24 hours. After they left, Vasily questioned Satrakian about where they would get so much money. Satrakian explained that they came today to confirm if the book was really there. If the book was in the bishop's hands, they could forcefully take it. Vasily laughed upon hearing this. On the other side, after witnessing the horrors of the Strigoi, Raya planned to convince her father to leave the restaurant. However, the restaurant was Narain's 26-year endeavor, and he was unable to let it go. But for the safety of their family, he eventually decided to leave. When Gus and Raya were packing things in the kitchen, they kissed each other. It was at that moment that Quinlan appeared and asked Gus to meet with him alone. We need to talk. He learned from the ancestor that Vaughn had trained a human warrior. He came to request Gus to join him in the fight against the master. After hearing this, Gus said that he no longer wanted to fight and kill, but just wanted to live an ordinary life. He then pulled out a gun and asked Quinlan to leave. It's okay, baby. It's okay, baby. After Gus calmed down, Quinlan released him and revealed that the master already knew that Gus was opposing him. So the master will attack the people Gus loves first, and then make Gus submit. Quinlan states that if Gus wants to protect the people he cares about, he should stay away from them until they kill the Strigoi, and only then can they truly be together. After hearing this, Gus decided to fight side by side with Quinlan to kill the blood ancestor for the sake of the woman he loved. Meanwhile, Eichhorst receives information and finds the bishop. Upon learning that so many people want the book, the bishop raises the price. In order to obtain the Oxido Lumen, Eichhorst turns the bishop into a Strigoi, so that the clues of the Oxido Lumen will be known by the Strigoi. This book contains the means to destroy the master and the patriarchs. At this time, Satrakian and Vasily arrive at the church and as soon as they walk in, they discover a body on the ground. By now, the bishop's body has been invaded by nematodes, and he will soon turn into a Strigoi. The whereabouts of the Oxido Lumen will also be known by the Strigoi. Just then, Vasily appears with a gun, but Eichhorst quickly dodges. Vasily throws a silver grenade at Eichhorst, and after the explosion, Eichhorst quickly escapes through the window. Then Satrakian begins to question the bishop about the whereabouts of the Oxido Lumen. He tells the bishop that if he turns into a Strigoi, the master will take the Oxido Lumen, and then all humans will become Strigoi. After hearing this, Rudyard Finescu. The bishop reveals a name, and Satrakian decapitates him. On the other side, Kelly uses the feelers to track down Zack's whereabouts. Kelly follows them all the way to the base of the vampire hunters. Zack is currently sitting inside the house, which has been reinforced by Vasily, making it impossible to force entry. Kelly knocks on the glass and calls for Zack to open the door. However, Zack refuses because he knows that Kelly has been infected by the Blood Clan, but Kelly lies to Zack telling him that she has been cured and urges him to open the door quickly. Zack believes her and F seems to sense something. He saw Kelly standing in front of the window, and F quickly spoke up to stop Zack. He rushes downstairs but is still a step too late. Kelly successfully breaks in, but Nora appears just in time. Then, F grabs a knife and prepares to fight Kelly to the death. Nora also grabs a gun and starts looking for Kelly. At this moment, two feelers quietly enter the room and ambush Nora. After dealing with the feelers, F continues to search for Kelly. Suddenly, Kelly descends from above, knocking F to the ground and throwing Nora aside. No, stop! Kelly sees F preparing to grab a knife, so she extends her stinger to kill him. At this time Nora stood up and threw the iron hook towards Kelly. Zack realizes that he has been deceived. Just as F is about to kill Kelly, a feeler suddenly appears and blocks the bullets. Kelly escapes again. At this moment, Kelly is very sad because she was only a few meters away from Zack. Eichhorst saw this and started comforting her. He told Kelly that failure is inevitable, but at least she found the hiding place of the vampire hunting team. Just now, the master told him a plan that has a high chance of rescuing Kelly's son, and then he asked Kelly to prepare. The next day, Everyone gathered together to discuss what to do because the master now knows their location. If they stay here any longer, the master will definitely come and attack. After hearing this, Nora suggested going to Red Hook, 
where the security is tight and Justine leads a small army. Everyone agreed that it is the safest place. The vampires are killing humans everywhere in the city, and the government's inaction has made the situation uncontrollable. Fortunately, Justine has sealed off Red Hook, making it an infection-free zone. At this time, F found Justine and told her that a group of vampires disguised as normal people had infiltrated Red Hook yesterday. Although the vampires were driven away, they will launch another attack. Citrakian hopes that Justine can strengthen the defense because vampires will still try to infiltrate Red Hook. Justine didn't believe that any vampire could get past her layers of defense, so she drove F and others out. However, as F predicted, a group of vampires smuggled in from the sea. They were led by Eichhorst and Kelly. The boat owner started asking Eichhorst for money. Soon, the security guard heard a distress call on the walkie-talkie, saying that the area was being attacked by a large number of creatures. Just as they finished speaking, there was no sound on the other end of the walkie-talkie, so the two security guards immediately got up and went to check. The staff in the power room also wanted to help, but just as they opened the door, Eichhorst led the vampires to the entrance. At this time, F and the others were outside and didn't know what to do. At that moment, the entire Red H. Holocaust power and the surrounding area was plunged into darkness. It was only then that Lena realized something was wrong, and she quickly found F and the others. Citrakian said that this was definitely the work of the vampires, and without the protection of the ultraviolet lights, they would attack in full force. Upon hearing this, the mayor of Red Hook immediately ordered his men to prepare a car to escape from here. However, Justine was prepared to fight the vampires to the end, and she then led all the police officers to the entrance. They vowed to protect the residents of Red Hook, lined up in a row, and started throwing flares outside to provide visibility. Sure enough, not long after, the vampires launched their attack. At Lena's command, everyone started firing at the vampires. With everyone's determined resistance, the attacking vampires were quickly cleared out. Citrakian warned everyone not to celebrate too soon, because this was just a test by the vampires, and they would soon launch a full-scale attack. Justine felt desperate after hearing this. As the police force in Red Hook was only a few dozen people, they would not be able to withstand a large-scale vampire attack. Now, the only option was to restore power to the ultraviolet lights, which would be able to stop the vampire army, due to the lack of defense at the main gate. The task of restoring power fell on the vampire hunting team. Just as they were about to get in the car and go to the power plant, Citrakian went straight to the base. Upon seeing this, F immediately followed and asked him what he was going to do. Citrakian said he was going to confront Eichhorst in a final battle because this was a rare opportunity. Seeing his determined attitude, F could only let him go. At this time, the sounds of vampire roars kept coming from outside Red Hook, sending chills down people's spines. Lena went to the elevated highway to check the situation outside. The scene in front of her instantly filled Justine with fear. Countless vampires were already outside, ready to attack, and they had no way to resist such a large number of vampires. 